live from John Hammond Road in Adesawe. This is Midday Live coming to you uh, from our news hub here at Adesawe in Kanda. Happy Workers Day to you. My name is Parkus Yassari and coming up. President Akufuado announces establishment of Coco Farmers Pension Scheme on the occasion of May Day. Also, former President John Romani Mahama describes security situation in the country as unprecedented as he congratulates Ghanaian workers on May Day. Later in the bulletin, workers in Kumasi call for renewed social contract that guarantees adequate wages and safe working environment. And elsewhere in the world, Venezuela's President Nicolas Maduro claims to have defeated what he calls a military coup attempt by the opposition leader, Juan Guado. We've got details of all these stories plus many more coming up in the bulletin. Uh, remember, we're streaming live on Facebook. You can also join us with your views, comments, and suggestions on any of our top stories this hour. Visit any of our social media pages. It's TV3GH on Facebook and on Twitter. So we can now cross over to the Independence Square, where my colleague Daniel Poku is standing by to speak to some Ghanaian workers on the occasion of May Day. Just to remind you that we're streaming live on Facebook. Um, you can join us with your views, comments and suggestions on any of our top stories this hour. Remember, this is May Day. I'm sure you heard the president's speech. Uh, if you want to react to it, uh, you've got some concerns about what the president said, uh, feel free to visit any of our social media pages. It's TV3GH on Facebook and on Twitter. So we can now cross over to the Independence Square where my colleague Daniel Poku is standing by uh, to speak to some Ghanaian workers on the occasion of May Day. Social Partnership Council, which consistently you have been at the forefront. What do you make of that? How, what is your level of confidence in the social partnership agenda? I, I think we should all be confident about it because this is going to be the first time the president and the government is opening that space for dialogue. And as organized labor, we are going to use that space fully. Uh, we have a lot of confidence in the, in the, in the social partnership. Uh, the president is going to launch the council very soon. Yes. Okay. We should have been talking. Yeah. I'm tired. Okay. Let's go. So, look, I was asking your level of confidence in the social partnership council. And the point I was making was that we have a lot of confidence in the in the social partnership because we were part of it from the word go and now the president is saying he's going to launch the council very soon we have already submitted the names of our council members uh, we have six each from uh, employers from government and from labor so our representatives are from all the sectors and we are very confident that we are going to have something positive from this council. Right. Over 3 billion Ghana cities currently has been transferred from the te pe temporary pension fund from Bank of Ghana to the various custodians. Okay, yeah. exactly. Now the arrears all snake. Ghana earmarks over 200 million Ghana cities to clear the arrears. Is that enough? Is that adequate? I don't know the exact figures uh, in terms of arrears. Right. But I think the positive thing the president said was that they are making efforts to settle the arrears. And I think we, we, should, we should take it like that. I have confidence that once the president has made this statement on a workers' secret day like this, he's going to go by it. I'm very confident about that. So we have to go and make sure something is done. And currently we are working with SNIT, with MPRE, and together with government, I'm sure we can resolve this issue. The computations of pension, are you sure that the issue can be brought to finality? Yes. I'm very confident. We have made very good progress, and I said that in my speech. We have been engaging SNET. It has taken some time, SNET and MPRA, for the last two years. And I'm confident that where we are, we got the MPRA report only last week. We have already had some informal discussions around it. We are going around with SNET across the country from 21st of May to open the discussions in the regions as well. And when we gather all these views and we put them together, and we work together, we can improve pensions, we can, you know, improve uh, what we call lump sum and so on for people who retire in this country under the pension scheme. Doc, my final question to you. The last time I spoke with you, it has to do with the port issue. Now, yes, the NPS issue. You said we're going to petition the president. Have you done that? Because currently, 
members of maritime. The president, I said we are going to have discussions with the president. Have you done? But but we were engaging uh, MPS itself, uh, and that engagement is still ongoing. We are hoping that MPS will listen to reason and they will accept the review. But once MPS accepts the review and we know that it is mutually beneficial for Ghana and for MPS, then case die, as we say it in Ghana. But if MPS refuses to accept a review, then we will want to pursue it. Union will continue. The community must get involved. We expect you, every Ghanaian, to get involved so we can get a better deal for this country. We deserve a better deal than what is there now. You cannot give your port to a foreign company for 35 years. And when you do the analysis, you realize that Ghana has been shortchanged. We have to change it, and we will. Thank you very much, Dr. Yabam. Yeah, yeah. Now, we just finished with the Secretary General of the Trade Union Congress, who also doubles as a spokesperson for, for organized labor. And basically, Dr. Yaba is has a lot of confidence in the setting up the Social Partnership Council, which the President mentioned, and that's expected to be set up in the course of the year. Now, the Social Partnership Council is also expected to sit and look at the computations that consistently SNIT has been making with the NPRA for pensioners who retire after active service. And also, Dr. Yaba mentioned the, the, the latest issue which is currently happening at the port, the NPS issue, which he says that they will be engaging the president to bring finality to the problems. Now, earlier he stated that when, when, when the agreement is allowed to go through, over a thousand workers are likely to be laid off. Now, Dr. Yaba is expecting the president to meet the president and get some of these issues and concerns and grievances as well addressed. From the Independence Square in Accra, Daniel Opoku, TV3 News. All right, uh, you had our reports other Daniel Poker reports in live from the Independence Square uh, where the May Day celebrations was held. Let's get on the phone lines now and speak to uh, Ben Arthur. He's a labor expert. Thank you very much, Mr. Arthur, for your time and good to have you on May Day Live. So I'd like to start off, first of all, by uh, taking your own analysis of the president's statement, uh, especially with regards to the um, launch of the social partnership uh, that he talked about. Hello? Right, can you hear me, sir? Yeah, I can hear you now, sir. Yes. I was asking uh, your own thoughts about the president's uh, remarks during the May Day celebration about the establish, uh, the launch of the social partnership. Well, it, it, it's a good thing, and I really commend the uh, president for that. Uh, in fact, uh, Ghana practices a apartheid system. What it is, is that there is a organized labor or workers representatives, there's government and their employees. So once there's an, another avenue for interaction, you know, for making sure that the social partners come together to look at their common interests or welfare, that, that is in good stead. And I pray that it comes to pass. Mm. Again, one issue that seems to have come up quite uh, strongly uh, is about the uh, payment of pensions for workers who eventually retire. Uh, there appears to be some agreement that they need to look at the computation of what goes into the payment of lump sum. Is this a matter that needs to be addressed in your own well, view? Yes, de de definitely. I know organized labor uh, wants to look at, uh, instead of uh, when it comes to the mandatory basic uh, pensions, that is the Smith one, instead of looking at three debt uh, pay for for three months, they want to look at uh, three debt pay for for three years. I mean, on annual basis, instead of looking at the month. So, as for the formula, it can be reviewed. And I think that once organized labor or the sector players will come together to agree on the formula, that will lead to the benefit of both the scheme and that of beneficiaries. Why not? Why not? I mean, it's it's an interplay among the the parties. So, it's a good thing to do. There is a need to reduce the pension. In fact, there is one psychological aspect of pension. Some people make contributions and they believe that they are not going to benefit from it much. Getting subsequent people to make contributions, you know, is sometimes hampered. 
And even when they are doing it, they don't do it to their best of ability, especially when we have a, a, three, a multi tier approach towards our pension. Yes, we have the mandatory, we have the mandatory tier one and mandatory tier, tier two. But when it comes to tier three, which depends largely on the voluntary action of an individual, we realize that people are not forthcoming because they but have not developed much trust in the scheme. So when there's a need for dialogue, which will, will, which will engender what we call trust building, definitely is a good thing. And I think that all aspects of our industrial relations and players, stakeholders must come together and support it. And I support it fully. All right, thank you very much. Uh, ben Arthur is a labor expert, uh, giving us some uh, analysis on the president's remarks uh, during the May Day celebration. So uh, let's go live also uh, to hear exactly what the president said uh, during the May Day celebrations today. That the Ministry of Finance has arranged for payment of 200 million CDs and the bond of 700 million CDs towards the retirement of the arrears owed to SNCC. This will leave arrears of 200, of 800 million CD, which will be included in next year's But We will build a robust economy and a, pros a prosperous society when we put in place a pension scheme for all workers. For far too many of our people, the end of their lives is marked by poverty. Too many people either have no pensions at all or have inadequate pensions to meet the needs of old age. In the informal sectors of the economy especially, most people work without any thought to pension coverage. And when they no longer have the strength to work, their lives become miserable. Our societies have changed. Old people can no longer regrettably count on their children to look after them in their old age. I hope and pray that we never lose the Ghanaian value of accepting responsibility for looking after our old people. But that should not stop us from organizing things to ensure independence and dignity to the old during retirement. We're working on an economic transformation agenda through the various job creation initiatives, such as planting for food and jobs, one district, one factory, industrial stimulus package, planting for export and rural development, private sector support, support schemes, which are beginning to bear fruit and should start reducing unemployment and provide opportunities for citizens to work and higher incomes and contribute to their pensions. A year ago, I made special mention of the importance of the TVET sector in equipping our young people for the world of work. I promised that we will back the talk with action. I'm glad to be able to report that we have made important progress. We are funding for 21 state-of-the-art TVET centers. Parliamentary approval has been given for all 34 NVTI centers to be upgraded, retooled, and curricula improved and teachers trained. All right, so you heard the voice of the president, Nanadu Dankar Kufad, under there during the May Day celebrations that just ended a while ago. We're going to go back to the uh, Independence Square where my colleague, Daniel Poku, uh, had an interview with the General Secretary of the Industrial and Commercial Workers Union, Solomon Cote. To pay the arrears or the Senate, and also a social partnership council to be set up to help address issues relating to labor, issues relating to negotiations, and also issues relating to um, conditions of service. Now, I have with me the general secretary of the Industrial Commercial Workers, so Mr. Solomon Kote, to delve deeply into what the president said, whether I see is satisfied with what the president said and with the president's proposal. Good afternoon, Mr. Kote. Good afternoon, my brother. Kote, the setting up social partnership council, what do you make of that? Well, um, socially, it's going to bring a lot of interventions that will help both the employer, government, and then the union. So it's something that we need to embrace. In fact, we have gone ahead to sign the MOU, and we are looking for the practicality of funds to be released, and then the, pro, the whole entire project will take off. Confidence in the, in the social balance? Obviously, if you look at the values that it carries, it's something that will benefit the nation. My final question to you, on the arrears of Senate, 200 million, is it enough? It's not enough, but if you look at the value of what ought to be done, something must start and then at least more monies could be rolled in and then we will move it forward, since it's the initial stages of it. I don't think pensions are sustainable in this country. Well, 
the mandatory receiver Where we are, government is the first culprit. Government is the one owing more than any other contributor to the fund. Government will hold arrears over a period, and then if there's a change of government, they tell us we have come to clear all the arrears. Then before he's saying this, you ask yourself, in the last two years, has government made himself clean from snitch? That is also not true. So we believe this rhetoric political statements must die off and let us face the actuals and realities of our time. Thank you. You're welcome. And as organized labor, we are going to use that space fully. Uh, we have a lot of confidence in the, in the, in the social partnership. Uh, the president is going to launch the council very soon. All right, so you had my colleague Jan Daniel Poku there in that interview with the General Secretary of the Industrial and Commercial Workers Union, Solomon Kote. Well, staying on May Day celebrations, former President John, John Dramani Mahama has described the current security situation in the country as unprecedented. He said the phenomenon is becoming a threat to foreign and domestic investment. Well, in a May Day message to Ghanaian workers, John Mahama said he's aware of what he describes as present harsh social economic environment within which so much is expected of workers. He said he has also taken cognizance of the numerous unfulfilled promises of the government, which according to him has led to the twin phenomenon of massive job losses and unemployment. The former president encouraged workers not to despair, but rather keep hope alive while praying for better times in the coming years. The former president also promised workers truthful, selfless and dedicated leadership to improve the well-being and security of all Ghanaians. He used the opportunity to remind government of the overarching need to work conscientiously uh, towards the attainment of the Sustainable Development Goals and in particular Goal 8, which calls for the promotion of sustainable economic growth and decent work for all. Meanwhile, the Civil and Local Government Staff Association, CLOCSAC, has called for the immediate resignation of the Auditor General, Daniel Domelevo. At a news conference addressed by its Executive Secretary, Isaac Bampoado, the association accused the Auditor General of awarding consultancy contracts on payroll fraud in the public service, comprising the biodata of its members. The association cited Article 187 of the Constitution, which mandates the Auditor General to conduct external auditing instead of internal auditing. The situation, according to Clocksack, has affected the work of some of its members at the audit service. Executive Secretary of the association, Isaac Bampuado, called for the immediate resignation. If we've been given a role to perform, and you, you will not perform that role, and you think somebody's role is better for you, then you, you, you don't warrant to be where you are. You must get out, resign honorably. Unless somebody who can perform that role, do it. Because it's for the good of all of us. It's for Ghanaians. It's not what you think, ah, this is what I want to do, so I'm going to do it. There are rules and regulations. He again expressed concern over the Auditor General supervising the award of contracts to deal with payroll fraud to consultants. Isaac Bampuado argued that such a move has compromised the biodata of its members, creating job insecurity. These consultancies are still running, and these are vital public information that are out there. And what's the end result? Every morning, you, they will wake you up with an SMS message, come and collect loan. Where did they get these personal details from? It's from these consultants. And it's against the Data Protection Act. He said the association would petition other key stakeholders, including the Civil Service Council and the Public Services Commission, to deal with the matter. Every unit has got a manager over there who is supposed to verify. So if these managers are not being held responsible, and then you now want to go and perform that fashion, who is going to hold you responsible? You're still watching Media Life here on TV3. You're a reminder that we're streaming live on Facebook. Uh, you can also get interactive with us on any of our social media pages. It's TV3 Ghana on Facebook and on Twitter. Let's now go for our MTN video report. This woman is called Salama Tuya. She delivered quadruplets and she has been referred to Tamale Teaching Hospital. The ambulance is charging 150 Ghana cities and she has no money to pay for these innocent children to be referred to Tamale. But fortunately on her path, the Daboya DCE 
Honorable Ilya Subawa says he's going to cater for the transportation to take them to Tamale for these children to have a better health care. My name is Mariam Bugri reporting from Daboya. As the watch and made it live here on TV3 still ahead, we've got the very latest in international news, we've got business and we've got sports all coming up. Hello, other. Welcome to the business news segment here on Midday Live on TV3. Let's do some uh, news now. And a heavy duty vehicle assembly plant at Insawem in the eastern region has been commissioned under the One District, One Factory policy program. While the facility is a collaboration between government and management of Zonda Technology Ghana Limited. Minister of State at the Office of the President, Brian E. Champong, commended the company for contributing positively to the automobile industry. He said government had extensively collaborated and cooperated with management of Zonda Technology to partner the one district, one factory to build a multi-million dollar assembly plant to create jobs. The one district, one fa factory is aimed at establishing one factory or enterprise in each of our 216 districts, not by government, but encouraging private persons and giving, setting up the environment for them to be able to set up the industry, not government building factories in districts. Chief Executive Officer of Zonda Technology Ghana Limited, Yang Yang, said the objective is to ensure many young Ghanaians become gainfully employed. Today, I wish to inform you that Zonda has activated part of its assembled plant and some of the aforementioned vehicles and equipment are being manufactured in Ghana with abundant spare parts. She stressed that the company will provide tailored services to numerous industries across the country. In other news, government has signed a strategic partnership agreement with the United Kingdom to increase investments from the current £3.4 billion to £30 billion. Now, part of the funds will be utilised in promoting industrialisation, job creation and fight cybercrime. The strategic agreement will also focus on health and education financing. Issues on sustainable development goals and poverty reduction are also explained in the document. Minister of Foreign Affairs Shelia Yokobochi noted government will strengthen bilateral ties with the United Kingdom. I'm having also the African continental free trade areas um, coming to being will not just be um, industrialization to benefit us but also um, work companies can use Ghana as a launch pad into, into Africa's 1.3 billion population market. Many, many friends amongst African countries, uh, Ghana is one of those. So I hope it will mean that we reinvigorate our relationship with um, many of our traditional friends around the world. On concerns about trade partnerships between the two countries after Brexit, the two dignitaries gave an assurance of redesigning their cooperation. Uh, numbers of new businesses in technology areas, um, the uh, extremely rapid industrialization that's happening, the development of mobile phone payment systems, all these exciting developments where Africa is taking a lead and I think this is the opportunity for us. There will be some trade um, agreements that would have to be re-looked at, but um, whatever it is, I believe that Ghana um, would very much like even more um, the, the close economic ties and cooperation between our two countries. Elsewhere, bread consumers in the Tamale metropolis will from today pay more for the bread they consume. This follows a two-day strike by the Bread Bakers Association in Tamale over increase in prices of ingredients used for bread making. Here's a report by my colleague Christopher Mwako. There was total shortage of bread in the Tamale metropolis Tuesday morning. Bakers and vendors had their shops locked with inscriptions of no bread, leaving consumers stranded. The strike, according to members of the association, is to prepare consumers for an upward adjustment in prices. They say the increase is as a result of hikes in the price of flour, 
sugar, butter, gas and other commodities used in the business. Available market prices uh, for bread ingredients uh, have increased uh, drastically. Flour, somewhere November 2018, December 2018 was around 135 Ghana cities per 50 kg. Um, currently, as we speak, um, the current price is around 165 Ghana cities. And uh, for about three years now, we've not experienced any increase in uh, bread prices and uh, is affecting our businesses. Consumer Umar Al Hassan expressed his frustrations as a result of the strike. In other news, the Chief Executive Officer of the Ghana Investment Promotion Center, Yofi Grant, wants more engagement between his outfit and the Office of Diaspora Affairs to promote trade. He explained such engagements could trigger more investment opportunities for diasporans wishing to invest in the country. In 2018, President Akufuado officially proclaimed 2019 as the year of the return at a ceremony at the United States National Press Club in Washington, D.C. The year is meant for all diasporan descendants of Africans who were captured and transported into the Americas as slaves in the 17th and 18th centuries to return to Ghana. Many of these persons are skilled across various industries and can potentially contribute to building key industries in Ghana. Head of the Office of Diaspora Affairs at the Presidency and Chair of the Right of Return Planning Committee, Akwesi Abebio, in an earlier interview with TV3, noted the office is working with agencies such as the GIPC to ensure the country benefits. These guys who are coming in as visitors or as tourists or as investors would be themselves looking for their own opportunities. The GIPC we know is set up purposely for that sort of thing. We also have what we call the Ghana um, Export Promotion Council and all the other facilities. This office specifically has got a very good relationship and we are trying to deepen it. However, an interaction with the Ghana Investment Promotion Center, Chief Executive, revealed otherwise. Not yet as active as it should be, but I suspect as we are getting closer and closer to the period when the whole thing culminates into some sort of celebration or so, um, our role will become clearer because we will have workshops and seminars outlining what the opportunities are. According to the World Bank's Migration and Development Brief, Ghana received $2.2 billion from remittances in 2017, from a total of $38.4 billion that Sub-Saharan Africa recorded. Remittances to Sub-Saharan Africa accelerated 11.4% to $38 billion in 2017. He noted mechanisms must be put in place to make it more attractive for diasporans to invest in Ghana. Are there any tax incentives for diasporans looking to invest in the country? Not at this moment. Um, that's a policy initiative that we need to look at. Some of the capital limits that we have shouldn't apply to them. Um, um, ability to employ under quota systems, we can look at that. The proclamation of the year of return is also in line with the 116th U.S. Congress resolution establishing the 400 years of slavery endured by African Americans. You're also watching the business news here on Media Life on TV3. Now, the Chief Executive Officer of Innova DDB and also the President of the Advertising Association of Ghana, Mr. Joel Nete, um, has been speaking about the future of. Uh, of the business here in Ghana, of advertising, a bigger part in, in Ghana. He was speaking on time with the captains when he took his session here on TV3. Letter ...does not even follow the templates. I am scared. <laughs> no, 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 it's not a joking matter. I am scared for the quality of education in Ghana and how that impacts on us as a nation going forward. Let, we're not having a conversation about the content after you follow the template, what have you written? That's a different conversation. Mm. But a first class student cannot write a letter. We are in trouble. And when I do my research and I find out that, and correct me if I'm wrong, you are the guys in the universities now, but I find out that apparently 
because of the numbers in the class, today most, of, most, most classes or most um, courses from level 100 to level 400, for instance, are writing multiple, multiple choice. choice and not writing essays. I can understand why that's the situation. But it's not sustainable. Where are we going as a country? It's not sustainable. You can't have somebody who now then becomes, one day becomes, wh wh where are the Kofi Annans of this world? Who out of this generation is going to apply to go and work with the AU, go and work with the United Nations, go and work with the various banks? You can't write a letter. <laughs> Look, we're, we're, in, we're, in, we're in significant amount uh, of we're gonna, We've got to be wrapping up, but before, I can't go without asking you. Uh, you belong to the world of um, advertising. Yes. What is the future of advertising in Ghana today? It's tough. Um, I, for us, as like a, a typical service, we are dependent on our clients. Our clients' buoyancy, their willingness to market, to engage, to sell, to whatever, all of those things. Now, when people generally are complaining about the economy is this, the economy is that, the first thing, unfortunately, that they cut is what they call expenditure, right. which is typically marketing budgets. communications, mm -hmm. advertising budgets, services budgets, this, that, and the other. So for us, these are challenging moments. But also, when you look at technology, you look at um, the digital marketing space and the opportunities that are coming in. On one hand, it's quite exciting in terms of new technologies, new opportunities. Mm -hmm. But we can only maximize that if we have the resources and the means mm -hmm. to take advantage of that. So it's a double-edged sword. Um, Things are not exactly 100% bleak. Mm. There are opportunities. But I noticed uh, you've, tried, you've evolved a lot over the period. Uh, you talked about uh, even having a digital company. Yes. Is that because you recognize the, the strong challenge being posed by digital to traditional media? Absolutely. And that's, for us as a group of companies, that's, that's where we're going. We're saying that within the marketing communication space, yes, we're looking to diversify and do other things. But within our core space, which is marketing communications, whenever it is that we find an opportunity in a particular area where we think we either have the competence or we can develop the competence to be number one or number two. At the worst case, number three, we will go into that space and make a difference. All right, so that's all for the business news segment here on Midday Live. For more business news stories, you can log on to our website, www.3news.com. Now, workers have called for renewed social contracts that guarantees adequate wages, safe working environment, universal access to pension, and workers' rights to freedom of association and collective bargaining. They believe Ghana has what it takes to protect workers' rights if there is political will. Uh, Benjamin Edu joined the May Day Parade in Kumasi and asked more. Ghanaian workers today joined their global counterpart to celebrate this year's Workers' Day here in Kumase. Workers from Bed at the Edum main post office in a procession through some principal street before they finally arrived at the Jubilee Park in Kumase. You will speak to some workers about this particular day is concerned. So, sir, you are live on TV. Tell us, how does this particular day mean to you as a worker? But today's uh, celebration is as important as any other day in the life of every worker. This day is set aside to remind ourselves that some people in the past, we call our ancestors, sacrificed all they had to be able to gain us the freedom we are enjoying today as workers. And so for those of us who are celebrating it today, it's a continuation of what was left. And we also have a duty to pass it on to generations yet unborn. Our Ghanaian workers being treated fairly, uh, certainly, you cannot say they are being treated fairly. In the first place, all Ghanaian workers are complaining of low wages. And so that is always uh, an agenda on the drawing board anytime we meet as uh, organized labor. Uh, I think that there are major concerns that if you go around, you would see the plot cards indicating what really Ghanaian workers want. But I think that uh, one key issue that is outstanding has, has to do with the Ghanaian worker and the pension. And so if you look at our today's, uh, the team for today, it is sustainable pension for all, you know, uh, sustainable pension for all, the, the, the role of all stakeholders. And so that is also key as we celebrate today's uh, uh, May Day. 
And so we are calling on the government to pay serious attention to this particular issue, in addition to all other concerns that we have as workers of this country. Looking at how SNIT calculates our pension benefits, there's much to be doubted. My brother, currently there are some workers who go on pension and receive less than 1,000 uh, Ghana cities. So what future do these people have? So I think it will ginger the unionists into fighting this cause, which will help all of us in the future. The governments upon governments have not made any efforts to check worker uh, output. There is less we are doing in that area. There is nothing like check of workers' output. So there is a saying in working parlance that uh, workers pretend to, to work and government pretend to pay. Or you can say government pretend to pay and workers pretend to work. So I think there is much to be done in this country. A lot of issues have been raised with regards to the pension scheme. Yeah. What do you make of that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The pension scheme, in fact, pe pension is a serious issue. But then we've now seen the tier two, the, especially the Act 766, which make it mandatory for every worker to have the tier one, tier two. Of course, the tier three is not mandatory, but then it's important that every worker goes through the tier three so that, for, for instance, at Foric, we have a very nice tier three packages. Then the tier two. Now, the tier two is going to give us the lump sum and SNIT will be paying the monthly pay. So I think still something better can be done, especially the investment aspect. If you check somebody work from maybe the age of 25 to 60 years, and the person have only few, uh, what do we call it, CDs at the end of his 60 years, is, is, is sad. So some important things need to be, to be done in this country when it comes to uh, SNIT. All right, you're still watching Made Alive here on TV3. Still now, the musical rivalry between Ghana and Nigeria is about to be relived as Empire Entertainment warms up to the launch of the 2019 event. Shatawale, Whiskey, Stone Boy, Tiwa Savage, and Patapa are headlined in the 2018 event dubbed Rescue Mission. Now, who will headline Ghana Meets Niger this year? <laughs> May 3 is the launch date for the highly anticipated show. The musical showdown has over the years served the platform for A-less Ghanaian and Nigerian artists to battle for supremacy in a friendly but competitive atmosphere. <laughs> Music enthusiasts have always looked forward to the big platform. Superstars including Sarkodie, Wizkid, Shatawali, Davido, Stoneboy have headlined the show in the past. The 2018 event made a big statement, the then celebrity feud between two of Africa's top hitmakers, Ghana's Shatawale and Nigeria's Swiss Kid, was settled on the Ghana Meets Niger stage as they reunited. <laughs> Patapa, a.k.a. Patapizi, was the toast of the night aside his awesome stagecraft. His energetic performance was the talk of the town. Patrons have always received their money's worth. The musical rivalry is about to be relived. 
who makes a return to the prestigious Ghana Meets Niger stage. Keep your fingers crossed, the lineup for the highly anticipated musical showdown will be revealed come Friday, May 3. <laughs> We certainly will be bringing you all the very latest details on the launch, which is on Friday the 3rd of May. Now, the winner of TV3 Talented Kids Season 9, Samuel Usu, a.k.a. Young King Clef, has released his third single titled Baba. The inspirational piece highlights problems faced by young people as they strive to make it in life, encouraging them to keep trying. Now, Baba is an Afrobeat song produced by young OG Beats. Uh, since being crowned winner of Talented Kids, the young rapper has churned out songs, including in Shira, uh, State of Affairs, and now Baba. So that's all for Media Life here on TV3. Thanks very much for watching. My name is Park Christian Sorry for more news. You can log on to our website www.3news.com. Happy May's Day. Um, and um, <laughs> Thanks very much to all of you, to the cameramen and producers. Uh, we'll see you, God willing, uh, on News 360 tonight. Bye-bye.